Dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, I greet you very warmly in the precious name of our Lord. It is such a great privilege that we may live now, that we may now believe the promises for our time, that we may now partake in what God is presently doing. Yesterday, I listened to a sermon from 1964 by Brother Brenham. And then he says at the end, you all know what a tremendous experience happened on the 11th of June 1933 when the mighty supernatural cloud of light came down and said with a mighty voice as John the Baptist was sent to forerun the first coming of Christ, so the message that has been entrusted to you will forerun the second coming of Christ. And we see it exactly in fulfillment. Moses had one commission namely to lead them out. Joshua had the next commission, to bring them into the land of promise. And we see in our time that God always had someone he could use so that his word could be heard, believed, and put into practice. We are so thankful that we can truly believe as the scriptures say. Now we are going to read some scriptures and I ask that you take the attitude that the Lord, not a brother Frank, not a brother Brenham, but that the Lord speaks directly to us through His Word. Here you go. We read from 1 Corinthians 1, verses 7 and 8. 1 Corinthians 1, verses 7 and 8. So that ye come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Who shall also confirm you unto the end, that ye may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. What a marvelous word! Nothing will be lacking in the complete restoration and we will experience our preparation now and truly appear blameless before the Lord when He returns to take His own home. So we have read and so it will be. Praise and glory be to our Lord. Here you go. We read 
from Acts 14, verse 22. Acts 14, verse 22. Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. Yes, that is also a serious word. They strengthened the brothers and sisters everywhere, and we do the same. We want everyone to be strengthened in their faith, even if they have to go through the worst trials. We will see what Paul went through, what all the prophets went through, what true children of God go through in their families, in their marriages, what else in sickness, in growing old, or also in young people, as never before, so it is now in our time. But we strengthen each other in faith and know when God allows something, He watches over it to give the outcome so that we can endure it. With God all things are possible and we will reach the stage where the miracles of healing will happen right before our eyes. The Lord is the same today, and for that we are thankful. Be comforted in your afflictions in the name of the Lord. Here you go. We read from 2 Corinthians 11, verses 24 and 25. 2 Corinthians 11, verses 24 and 25. Of the Jews five times received I forty stripes, save one. Thrice was I beaten with rods, once was I stoned, thrice I suffered shipwreck, a night and a day I have been in the deep. Here Paul has listed what he had to go through because he was a preacher of the Word of God. Brothers and sisters, the servants of God have to walk the hardest path. Everyone else suffers with them and has their hardships, but the hardest trials always come to those sent by God. That is why our Lord said, Where would be a prophet whom you have not persecuted? And so on. Let us thank the Lord for carrying us through the most difficult trials so that the elect may reach the goal. Brothers and sisters, all we need to do is thank and trust the Lord and know that He will bring everything to pass gloriously. Here you go. We read from 2 Corinthians 12, 
Vers 10. 2. Corinthians 12, Vers 10. Therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Thanks be to the Lord. He went through all these trials, through all the persecutions, but brothers and sisters, when we think of our beloved Lord and Savior, his whole time up to the crucifixion, there was nothing but misunderstandings accusations. He has been called by every title that has been found. But the will of God was done through him. It is the same with us. We go through everything. When I think about all the things that have been spread about me, I really feel different, but I'm grateful. It is simply the case that true servants of God have to go through the most serious accusations, the worst slander. Nothing can be worse than what servants of God have experienced. When in 1979 it was spread, he is an adulterer, he is a homosexual, he is the Antichrist, he is the seducer of the bride. Everything was spread, even in writing, but nothing changed in me. I thank God that He has carried me through it all and He will do so until the end. And all the elect will not believe any slander but will believe that the Lord has given a divine calling that the prophet William Brenham has confirmed the divine commission and that the divine calling has been carried out and done throughout the world in the past 60 years. Thanks be to the Lord. I too have gone through the most difficult trials. Let's read on, Brother Borg, please. We read from James 5, verse 11. James 5, verse 11. Behold, we count them happy which endure. Ye have heard of the patience of Job, and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is very pitiful and of tender mercy. Amen. We really can read the 42 chapters of the man of God, Job, and right at the beginning, destruction, destruction. And then all the sons and daughters made a special feast, and lo and behold, there comes a storm 
that gets hold of the building on all four corners and brings everything down on the feast and everyone is dead in one fell swoop. Just think of it, the whole family, how many were they? Three sons, seven daughters, or seven daughters, three sons. In any case, everything was suddenly gone. And what had happened? Job ended up sitting on the ash heap and even his wife was full of despair and came to him and said, Curse God and die. Yes, trials can come upon believers that badly. And Job was a mighty man of God. And therefore, he had the most severe trials, and in the end, the end was blessed. He had twice as much afterwards as he had before. God gave a complete restitution, and that is why Job has been given to us as an example. We read it now. Here you go. We read from Ephesians 6, verses 10 to 12. Ephesians 6, 10 to 12. I'll read verse 10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. This is addressed to all of us. Finally, be strong in the Lord, in the indwelling power of God, so that we may become overcomers, victors, not perish in our trials, but always have new courage until the victory of God is revealed. Yes, we can only thank the Lord and praise His name. Here you go. I read from Ephesians 6, verse 11. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. May God grant this to me. May the Lord God grant us all to put on the whole armor of God and the sword of the Spirit that is needed for battle is the Word of God. And here I would like to add something. Brother Brenham was taken home on the 24th of December 1965. I saw him go up on the supernatural cloud. But then came the 31st of December. In the last three hours of the 31st of December 1965, the word came to me. My servant, I have placed my sword in your hand. It had previously been placed in Brother Brenham's hand when he was there in the mountains seeking God in prayer. Now, before I began my ministry, 
the sword of the Spirit was placed in my hands. And I tell you, you can open up the Bible wherever you want. Everywhere the sharpness of the word is heard. And we thank the Lord God that His word never returns void, but really accomplishes what it was sent to do. And then perhaps I may briefly mention the next example. Something extraordinary happened on the 19th of January, 1966. You all know, Brother Brenham spoke of an old building and a new tent in which he was to bring the message. And on the 19th of January, 1966, I saw this old building. There were wooden pillars and bricks in between. But here it comes. Downstairs, you went into this building. And when you went through, you were in the new tent. And if the building was 50 meters wide, then the tent was 50 meters wide. But the Lord guided me so that I went into the old building, went up the wooden stairs, and then I was on the balcony in the first row. And I sat down and looked, and I saw a marquee, not just a tent, like you see here, but a marquee, so something so marvelous, and I was so amazed, but it was empty the first moment I saw it. And the next moment, it was crowded, it was overcrowded, and then the word came to me in English, Now your time has come. Please go down the stairs and come. I got up and went down the stairs. And if this was the building, pardon me, if this was the building, and this was the nice big tent, then I went down here. Here was the center aisle, and right next to it was Brother Brenham's podium. Right here, one meter away from this building, and I had to walk around the podium and stand in the podium and then the voice rang out Now turn to the people and say The coming of the Lord is at hand And so it began that I was able to bring the message of God by the grace of God. And again and again, the Lord gave instructions on how and what I should do. Praise and glory be to His holy name. Here you go. We read from Ephesians 6, verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. But for this too, beloved brothers and sisters, 
and especially addressed to all ministering brethren, we can command the enemy, truly command in the name of Jesus Christ, depart, you are defeated on the cross of Calvary, you have no right, no claim on me. I am redeemed. The blood of the new covenant was shed for me. I am the property of Jesus Christ. Depart, Satan, depart, in Jesus' holy name. I command you, by the authority of the word of the living God, we simply have to get the carriage, brothers and sisters, really in faith. And that's why the sermon comes. Faith comes by hearing a sermon and may true, living, working faith come from this sermon which Satan must take note of. There is a blood-bought multitude. There is a bride of the Lamb of God. There are the redeemed in whom he no longer has any claim. May God really use this simple sermon for this purpose. For thus it is written, Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! The preaching does not come from me or Brother Brenham or Brother Paul, but from the word of God, which men of God have carried through whom God could speak, and the word does not return void, even now and today. And today, when we hear his voice from his word, what God has promised you and me and us in his word will come to pass. Here you go. We read from Colossians 2, verse 15. Colossians 2, verse 15. And having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Hallelujah! Brothers and sisters, this is the divine fact of the victory that took place on the cross of Calvary. Our Savior shed His blood, the blood of the new covenant. We have been bought we are the Lord's property. Satan no longer has any claim on us. We have been set free, released from all bondage, from everything that stood in our way in the kingdom of God. And may it really happen that the victory of God also becomes evident in our personal lives, in all the young people, in all of us, that we do not belong to this world, but are the Lord's property, and that His victory is our victory, and His overcoming is our overcoming for they have overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. 
It must come to the point that God's holy word will become the living testimony of God in the blood-bought multitude and that the Lord can accomplish His work through us. Hallelujah. Here you go. We read from John 17, verse 6. John 17, verse 6. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Hallelujah! Here again, we have a summary of what really happened. I have revealed your name to those whom you have given me out of the world. To you they belong. To me you have given them, said our Lord. And they have kept thy word. Hallelujah! They have kept thy word. We are going to read some more verses. We read from John 17, verse 9. John 17, verse 9. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. Hallelujah! In short, they are thine. They belong to you. Blessed and praised, you belong to the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Please read on. We read from John 17, verses 14 and 15. John 17, verses 14 and 15. I have given them thy word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou shouldest take them out of the world, but that thou shouldest keep them from the evil one. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, you all know that John 17 is a prayer of our Lord, not a speech, not a sermon, but a prayer that our Savior addressed to the throne of grace. Brothers and sisters, our Lord not only redeemed us, not only forgave us, not only healed us, not only gave us eternal life, He prayed for us. They are yours, He says to His Father. And His Father has become our Father. That's why we pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. John 17 must be read anew by all prayerfully. Here you go. We read from John 17, verse 18. John 17, verse 18. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. Thanks be to the Lord. Just as he was sent to accomplish redemption, so we are sent into the world. 
to proclaim the divine message of the finished work of redemption so that all may come to believe who are ordained to be with the Lord for eternity. Everything belongs together. Here you go. We read from John 17, verse 20. John 17, verse 20. Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also, which shall believe on me through their word. Thanks be to the Lord. Have you all listened carefully? He did not only pray for those who said before him, I pray not only for them, but for all who will come to believe through the proclamation of the divine message of salvation. The Lord had already prayed for all the redeemed who would become believers during the 2,000 years. He also prayed for us back then, and we are grateful for that. It is an absolutely perfect redemption by grace. Amen. Here you go. We read from John 17, verse 21. John 17, verse 21 that they all may be one, as Thou, Father, art in me, and I in Thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that Thou hast sent me. Thanks be to the Lord, that they may all be one that no divisions, no opinions, that nothing strange comes in, but only God's word alone is believed and done in obedience, that they may all be one. The unity in the Spirit is the divine result in the redeemed, so that He can reveal Himself with all power. In the beginning, the Church was one heart and one soul, and that is why God was able to reveal Himself so powerfully. May all those who have their own opinions remain silent. May all who hear God's word now hear nothing else but only God's holy word, so that we may come to the perfect unity and experience the mighty work of the Spirit of God. It is the prayer of our Lord, and I believe that His prayer has been answered, and I believe that the Church will be restored, and that all will have the fear of God, will have true faith, the fruits of the Spirit, the gifts of the Spirit, that everything will return to the beginning, and that absolutely not a single teaching will be brought that brings division, but only what is written will be taught, and that unites us under our head, Jesus Christ. Blessed be His name. Here you go. We read John 17, verse 22. 
and the glory which thou gavest me, I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. Do you see what this is about, brothers and sisters? I have given them the glory you gave me. I have given it to them. What have you already received of the glory of God? What have I got? What do we have? Oh, we need the supernatural working of God in our midst, in such a way as at the beginning, so that this prayer can also be fulfilled. And it will happen. We thank the Lord for it. Here you go. We read from John 17, verse 24. John 17, verse 24. Father, I will that they also, whom thou hast given me, be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me. For thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. Praise and glory be to the name of the Lord. I say again, beloved brothers and sisters, read the prayer of our Lord again and again and ask Him, Lord, fulfill it in my life. Let it happen as you have said it in your prayer from beginning to end and brought it before God. May this happen to all of us. Here you go. We read from Ephesians 5, verse 20. Ephesians 5, verse 20. Giving thanks always for all things unto God the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us also relate this word, beloved brothers and sisters, to the beginning of this word reflection. Give thanks to God in every situation, in every trial. Through everything we have to go through, during every illness, during everything, give thanks to God in every situation, because that is how He wants it, so that we do not doubt and do not become discouraged, but give thanks that the Lord will bring everything to pass in a glorious way and reveal His victory. Here you go. We read the last scripture from Hebrews 10, verses 36 and 37. Hebrews 10, verses 36 and 37. For ye have need of patience, that after ye have done the will of God, ye might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come, and will not tarry. Blessed and praised be our Lord. I would like to read this scripture at the end of every sermon and recommend it to everyone. 
For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come, and will not tarry. Do we not see in everything, beloved brothers and sisters, what is happening on earth worldwide? Are not the signs of the times a clear language? Must we not lift up our heads, as it is written, for your redemption draweth nigh? Must we not read again and again what our Lord said, When you see all these things coming to pass, then lift up your heads. Don't we have to read all these scriptures again and again and thank the Lord that we have really come to the end of the time of grace and that the Lord will finish His work with His church, with His bride church, And then he comes as the bridegroom to take her home to the marriage supper. And also with Israel, we see that everything is being fulfilled. After 2,000 years, Israel is once again a state, but must go through so many battles and trials until the state is reached that was already foretold in the Word of God, that everything will be such that the nations will come to Jerusalem no longer to fight, but to hear the words of God because the word will again go out from Jerusalem and the teaching from Mount Zion. After all the fighting, for which we are very sorry, after all the deaths, after all the bloodshed, after all, there will be peace. And we thank the Lord that now everything will really come to pass, blow by blow, and the return of the Lord is really close at hand. One more admonition to all brothers. Please take only what is written in the Word of God and preach only what God's Word says to our Lord be the glory. He calls out from all nations. If you would know what is happening right now, that all peoples are really listening, that it's being translated into all the languages to the ends of the earth, the last message has gone out and therefore it will also be fulfilled. This message of salvation must be preached to all nations for a witness, and then the end will come, and the end will come, just as it is written. The message of salvation will accomplish in all what it was sent to do. To our God be the glory. And brothers and sisters, be blessed in all your trials, in all your hardships. Be strengthened in faith. Take new courage and trust in the Lord. He will make all things well. We praise the blood of the Lamb. We praise the Word of God and we praise the Holy Spirit who guides us into all truth. And the victory of God is yours and mine 
in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you.